while working on a porch scheme on the front porch of a house in Richmond in the historic district, we damaged the capital at the top of the column. We took the parts and brought them to the shop. First we stripped them of all the paint. And after we could see what the true nature of the capital was, we mixed up some plaster and painted it on the outside surface to help fill in the voids and the dents that would prevent us from making a good silicone mold. Next, I sanded the plaster smooth to create a nice surface for the mold to not stick to. Then I smeared on some clay, I removed that, and then I painted the whole section that I wanted to duplicate with some purple lacquer that I had laying around the shop. I put the original and made a mold out of cardboard and wood. Then once I sealed all the holes, I sprayed some mold relief on the inside of the cavity, being sure to get all that I could so that the silicone would not stick to the pattern. Next, I prepared the silicone. It's a two-part. I bought a gallon, and it comes with uh, better than a pint, which has a dye in it. I just cut out the top of the gallon jug it just made sense. Why, why pour it into something else? I put in that dye-colored catalyst, mixed it till it was really nice and even. I want to make sure it was very thorough. You're not going to get a second chance. You've got to thoroughly shake up the dye and then mix the two parts together. First, I wanted to work the dye down to the bottom of the gallon jug. Then I used a spiral paddle mixer. You can buy it pretty much at any hardware store and thoroughly mix the silicone and the catalyst together for a good even blend. Then I poured the silicone into the mold. I calculated that it would take about a gallon, but really wasn't sure. Now the idea here is that you want to create as few air bubbles as possible. And you, when you put your pattern in, you want to make sure you're not going to trap any air. pulled out my multi-tool, which operates based on a back and forth motion. That back and forth motion, when I hold it up to the side, creates a lot of vibration. That vibration allows those air bubbles to rise to the top. When I was putting the silicone in, I noticed that some started leaking out the bottom of the mold. So I just pulled out a caulk gun and caulked the bottom crack. So I had a few different size wood blocks standing by in case I needed to push them into the silicone to give me more volume in the silicone. Also the wood blocks added a little bit of structure. A little more vibration, really trying to get those air bubbles to rise to the top. 
before the silicone starts to solidify. And then I pushed the board down into the silicone to displace that silicone to the height that I planned on making the mold in the first place. Here you can see the bubbles rising to the top. That silicone is so thick, it just needs some extra help allowing those bubbles to rise. I left the silicone sit for a day. You'll notice that I screwed a majority of this box mold together so that I could unscrew it and take it apart. The cardboard is just simple waste material. I disassemble all of the mold box. Spraying that silicone mold release really lets everything come apart pretty easily. Here you can see the back side of the capital, and I go to take it apart. That silicone will really stretch. Yeah, I broke that original part. What a shame. But now that I have the silicone mold, it really doesn't matter. It was still a shame. A little bit of cleanup and get this thing prepared. So that I can start making some plaster cast capitals. The mold came out really good. I was very pleased with the results. I didn't want it perfect because if it looked like it came from a factory, then it would stand out from the original. original and the silicone mold side by side. Here's one with a plaster cast. Hey, if you like watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and notify. It helps me grow this business and this channel. Really appreciate you watching.